Hi, my name is Mary Bosworth and I'm Director of Border Criminologies and of the Centre for Criminology at the University of Oxford. And today I'm here with Khadija Bonzinitberg Carroll, who's Professor of Global Art at Birmingham University. And we're going to talk a little bit about a project that um, we have recently finally finished after a number of years um, on the Immigration Detention Archive. And uh, what I want to talk about with Khadija is about the, 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 her experience of working as an artist and an art historian on a topic um, about immigration detention with a criminologist. And so before I turn to Khadija, just a little bit of background. Um, I've been doing research inside British immigration detention centres since 2009. And while that research has primarily been interview based and ethnographic along the way inevitably i've been given all sorts of things um, and at a certain point quite some time ago now about 2015 i think i realized that i had amassed an amount of material um, documentary material um, handbooks statistics but also um, drawings by detainees uh, origami by detainees, beaded bracelets by detainees, and that I, I had basically been amassing an archive of material. Um, and criminologists don't typically use that sort of material in their research. And so I turned to uh, Khadija to try and help make sense of what I had and and to think more uh, and differently about how to use this kind of material um, and so from that we produced a number of different things one of which was a book called Bordered Lives Immigration Detention Archive which Khadija is showing on the screen um, which came out in May 2020 and this book is a collection of artwork by detainees but it's more than that it's also um, an account of Khadija's creative process in in thinking through and using some of the artwork and it's an artwork in itself it's it's a kind of collection of pieces of, of art which which Khadija and our colleague Christoph Balzar have have sort of adjusted and laid and turned into other art forms in their own right so Khadija, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about your creative process in doing this book and also just your experience of working with this kind of material. Absolutely. I'm so, I'm taken back to the beginning of our work, you sitting with the background that you have at present inside the art room of a detention centre, the, the very places that we um, ran workshops in, collected, drawings that would have otherwise been thrown away when people were de deported or, or released, ideally. And, um, and I'm really pleased, I have to say, with the way in which um, we were able to collaborate and bring together the diversity of this material. So I think what we see in the book is finally the, the ways in which the stories and testimonies, which we heard um, recurring over and over, could be linked to the visual material also then um, the process of making kind of film and performance as a way of thinking through that uh, psychological experience in particular and trying to make that something that people can identify with. Yeah, so it's, I mean, I think the process for me has been completely fascinating. It's also been at times quite difficult um, and partly, partly because, and we've spoken about this quite a lot over the years, partly because criminologists and, and artists and art historians, uh, you know, both draw on, I suppose, different intellectual traditions, but also um, have a different process of making work and, and have, um, and I guess for my, in my position particularly, I suppose, have a kind of different um, relationship with the institutions which the work is about. And so, I mean, simply put, I suppose, for me, one of the things that I always have to struggle with is that I, you know, I continue to go into detention centres. And, and so this is a sort of long-term commitment to continuing to do work in them. And, um, and so how we sort of 
put, kept all those things in balance was actually at times quite difficult. And I know you found it difficult for your creative process. Yeah, absolutely. But also really exciting. Actually, the limitations that we set um, often then produce a particular artwork um, or creative process, which without those limitations, we wouldn't have come to. So I don't think I would have worked on censorship or um, I wouldn't have worked with performance and shadows and all of the strange um, attempts to self-censor the material that we weren't allowed to show because of the need to anonymize everything and those long conversations that we had about how to protect people and how to maintain this amazing um, access and I would never have had that access also if we hadn't have worked together so I think actually something comes out of that difficulty that and in my own practice when I reflect on projects I think I also seek those limits and those difficulties because that's what makes it interesting too so um, I, I think actually that's what's novel and I think we can read that in the essays of the book and the way that it's put together is that um, it's more than the sum of its parts as far as criminology and art goes and and that particular mixture is what makes it also able to show um, something that can't be shown which is always a great uh, challenge to an artist. Yeah I mean it, 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 it's uh, one of the things I suppose I found particularly interesting about the process um, is the the different um, effects of using images versus just using words, and so so it's always a surprise to me, although it perhaps shouldn't be, that that there's a lot of um, sensitivity around around photographs. So so the sort of way in which you know I had I have permission to take photographs, but it's very it's very sort of constrained. Um, but there's no sensitivity, or there's less sensitivity around words, and so and that that I think you know, creates all sorts of interesting questions about why images are, you know, is it, is it because images are, are, are seen to be more truthful, whereas words, words are, are somehow untruthful? Um, or is it just that people, um, you know, are, are perhaps not understanding what you can do with words? I mean, I think, I think this kind of distinction that, that the authorities make between images and testimony is something which, which I'm not really at all convinced by, <laughs> but which, which really structured what we could do. Yeah. But again, I think that led us to work with the drawings, which, um, as you say, the video was the most problematic. So all the things I filmed, I couldn't use, which at first seemed completely baffling to me. How was I going to make a project using none of the material that I had gathered? And then hence we turned to all these incredible drawings that you had collected. And I think, reflecting on the film that we made, Artists in Residence, there's a way in which mixing the voices of people in the interviews you did together with those drawings, um, as you say, has, a, as it has an impact that um, any one of those uh, mediums alone doesn't. And, and of course, people's dreams and kind of memories of home and these things when they're drawn are much more evocative than anything we could photograph as kind of hard evidence in an empty hallway of a detention center. Yeah, yeah. So, so since one of the things we, we thought we would do with this video is, is talk a little, little bit about the book, I was just wondering if you could um, explain the, the sort of second stage of, of, of the creative process, because I guess, you know, th there's been a lot of different steps along the way. Um, but at a certain point, you know, you had to make decisions about, you had to curate really items from the collection to put them into a book. Um, and so can you tell me a bit about what you and Christoph did and, and, how, and how those sort of discussions went? Mm, absolutely. I think it began with a question about what kinds of material um, we had collected and whether there were, um, there were recurring images, if you remember, and we had also gathered them in the archive along those lines. A lot of um, images of flags, images of women, images of home. Um, and so that was one way in which we began to put things together visually, but then we realized um, that we would mix rather 
stories that people had told us together with those uh, images. So that sort of begins to enter in the level of text and the captions. Um, and then again, the kind of layer of photography of the interior spaces. So you enter the book, you kind of enter the detention center and it goes ever deeper inside until you get to the paperwork, which were these incredible documents that are the kind of everyday bureaucratic power that the detention center has on people. And then in the center of the book, it's more documentation of um, the, the creative work that we did. And, and these are always accompanied by the essays. So it's this interweaving, I guess, of, um, of all that kind of those layers of interpretation, as I was saying before, which was a real challenge um, because we're dealing with hundreds of artists who were inside um, the detention centers and then uh, given their work to be inside the book. And it's also now open source and everything can be um, seen and downloaded. and um, yeah, so it was really about uh, unfolding or placing together material, I think, in, in design terms um, and just making it legible and, um, and to some extent coherent as a document that uh, portrays those places. Yeah. And do you have, do you have um, a sort of idea that this kind of collaboration between you know, artists and social scientists, do you think there's m scope to do other sorts of, of collaborative projects like this? Or, or do you think this was a sort of one-off and, and you know, that that's, that's the last time you're ever gonna <laughs> work with a criminologist or a sociologist or, you know, God forbid, a political scientist? <laughs> well, it is Refugee Week and we are amidst the most um, extraordinary turmoil into and and political scientists I think are needed um, especially now so I've been uh, very attuned I think always in my research for art projects to what uh, political scientists and sociologists and anthropologists are doing um, then working very closely under the strictures I think not so much of well the disciplines as well as the institutions in which you work, but I think that was also very particular to your, to the, the trust that you had built up um, and the way in which you were able to mediate between policy and government and the, the, that world and the home office and, and us who are usually completely outside of that. Um, so I would hope that I would have the opportunity again to work um, in a way I, I do that um, I think I seek that, as I was saying before, in other in other contexts. So I think um, it's possible. It's also every time unique because of the two people that are working together. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, yeah. <laughs> and for everybody who's interested in this, um, we will. Um, somehow try and make available the, the web link to, to, the, to the book Bordered Lives, but it is available, um, as Khadija said, free to download uh, under a Creative Commons license. It's also available inexpensively to buy from the press, Sternberg Press. And, um, and I think it's, it offers a really uh, unusual insight into the experience of being detained in the United Kingdom at the moment.